So a lot of people ask me, is Infect playable right now? And I'm like, well, the problem is, you know, Chalice of the Void is a pretty popular card. It sees a lot of play in blue-white control. Chalice on one's not so good. And uh, there's a lot of spot removal right now. A lot of one-mana spot removal. We, now we got Prismatic Ending and Unholy Heat in addition to Fatal Push. I don't know if you have enough ways to protect your cards. And then there's Ren and Six. Oh, yeah, Ren and Six, the Planeswalker. It's on the battlefield. It'll ping your infect creatures every single turn. Oh, oh, how could I forget? Engineered Explosives, which can be brought by brought back by old Allura stacks, and people love Engineered Explosives for beating up the Rhino decks. I, I don't know if your infect creatures are so safe in today's metagame. But then there's some maniac named Jeff Zhao that says, screw all the rules to deck building, and to hell with the metagame. He's running infect at Grand Prix Las Vegas, and then makes top eight with this insane list. Oh my god, we got, so we have got Infect by Jeff Jow who made the top eight of Grand Prix Las Vegas. And at first it looks pretty normal. We got, you know, we got Glistener Elf. We've got Noble Hierarch. We got a ton of green spells like Blossoming Defense, Might of Old Crows, and Mutagenic Growth. Scale up Vines of the Vastwood and become immense. So we have all the ways to pump up the creatures, make them bigger, push that Infect damage. But there are a few unique things to this. I mean, it's basically like mono green. I mean, even the sideboard is like basically mono green. And it's so weird. We got like one Blighted Agent. Usually there's a few more blue cards in an Infect deck. No, just one Blighted Agent out of all this. Okay, that's not so bad. That's not, okay, we can splash for that. Not too bad. All right, that's within the realm of sanity. And the, But then Frexian Crusader, a double black and one generic, are you kidding me? This, now this, now this just goes against all deck building rules. I mean, if someone brought me this deck list and said, Nikachu, can you fix my deck list? I mean, like, what are you doing with this Frexian Crusader? How do you even get the mana off to make this work? What are you, crazy? Well, you wanna play Soltai Infect in modern in this economy? And you still wanna play Ink Moth Nexus? It's like a four color duck almost if you have this Ink Moth Nexus in here. You're playing three colors off of like basically 16 lands but there is a method to the madness let's take a look at a little bit more of that mana base we're not just running noble hierarch we're also running the ignoble hierarch so this is a means of actually getting a little bit more black mana for that frexian crusader and i have to say it is so dangerous facing off against more than one noble hierarch in the infect matchup because they're at no, they no longer need to use any pump spells to win the game. They just need to use pump spells to protect their creatures, to protect the damage. Play the vines of the vastwood uh, or the yeah, play Vines of the Vastwood or Blossoming Defense to protect the creature. Give it Hexproof. And then the the Exalted triggers off of Ignoble Hierarch, off of the Noble Hierarch, will just carry the game. And now that we have eight Hierarchs, I mean, it basically turns everything into a... Like, it'll, it'll make everything at least three power. That's, you know, relative to a Delver of Secrets, except this is Infect Damage. So that's more like a six power Delver in this case. If you get two or more, if you get two or more Hierarchs out, I mean, you could be dead super quickly. But the Ignoble Hierarch helping fix the mana base for this, this abomination of a card. Now, let's, let's talk about Frexian Crusader. This might be the soul of why this deck won. Frexian Crusader, black, black, one generic, two, two, first strike creature. You know, first strike, probably not the most important part of this card. It's got protection from red and protection from white. What does that mean? It just turns out that the most important spells, removal spells in the format happen to be white, happen to be red. All right, so let's, let's, let's go over the list. All right, first we've got Unholy Heat. We've got Prismatic Ending. Let's not forget about the Elementals. We've got Solitude and Fury seeing play in multiple different decks. I mean, if you're not running Solitude or Fury in your deck that runs red or white, with the exception of maybe Burn, you're probably doing something wrong. So it dodges tons of that hate, also dodges Teferi Time Raveler, Teferi Hero of Dominaria, untouchable because of protection from white and protection from red. It's the time to bring this guy out. 
it really is the time for Phyrexian Crusader. And even if you try to put up some blockers, most of those blockers are going to be in the red or white colors. So sure, play Omnath all you want. Gain four life. Gain another four life on my turn when you crack your fetch land. It don't mean nothing because we've got the infect damage coming from Phyrexian Crusader. So this seems to be a super well-positioned card. But it's funny that they're willing to splash blue all for Blighted Agent. I guess... To hell with it, we just do it, right? They could have been going Golgari, but Blighted Agent definitely is still such a good card. It still seems bad in this economy, though, but I totally understand the Frexion Crusader. Even if you could try to kill this thing, you probably can't. Like, what kills it right now? What, Fatal Push? How many people are playing Fatal Push in this economy? They want the Unholy Heat to kill the Primeval Titans, right? And to, to also deal with Furies and Solitudes. They need to kill those, those things, because Fatal Push just doesn't do the job. It's not doing the job anymore, people. So Frexian Crusader cruise easily probably cruising to victory. I'm sure there's a lot of decks that are like, oh god, I can't do anything about this. I can't block it, and I have no removal spells for it. Um, now, interesting uh, choice, scale up 4x. Usually that was like a 3x card in a lot of infect decks, but you know what? We can still work with the, the 4x card. Uh, the insane mana base. We have one breeding pool, two forests, uh, four ink moth necks, two, two misty rainforests, two overgrown tombs, a pendlehaven, urborg, tomb of yogmoth. Hopefully, help cast that dam. Uh, Phyrexian crusader, two vern catacombs, two windswept teeth, two wooded foothills, and a yavamaya cradle of growth. Uh, quickly looking at the sideboard, two surgical extractions. For all them graveyard decks, one Ashok Dream Render. Uh, endurance, this does work as a really good Endurance deck because of all the green spells in the deck. You usually can just play Endurance for free, or you can even cast it. You can probably have it available by turn two with all those Hierarchs. Uh, Nisa, Voice of Zendikar. Not sure where this goes, to be honest, but we do have a lot of creatures in here, so I mean, I guess you could put a plus one plus one on all your creatures. Not too bad. Uh, gem Razor to deal with artifacts or enchantments, but also Force of Vigor. Just make sure those <laughs> artifacts and enchantments have no chance whatsoever. Now, there are. Th now, the problem with Infect was the removal. Like, the removal is so aplenty, but with Frexion Crusader, it doesn't care. Otherwise, there's some really good matchups for this deck. I mean, like, Prime Evil, like the Primetime decks, they absolutely hate facing down, like, a turn two Blighted Agent. Like, what are they going to do? So, if you play a Primetime deck, I mean, I mean, they're doomed. Same thing with Tron. If any Tron deck comes about, and it's still Tron in that metagame. Make no mistake. Burns around while Phyrexian Crusader blocks anything and everything, and then swings for almost certainly victory. A burn deck has absolutely no answer to this thing, except for maybe... I don't know, actually. I have no idea how they get rid of a Phyrexian Crusader. I was about to say maybe Skull Crack to remove the protection from red, but it's not going to remove the first strike. The first strike will get you. Not to mention, hey, by the way, did you know this thing has first strike? So it can block, or even if you block with anything, it's going to shrink first because of the infect, and then uh, and then you're ruined. So anyway, the first, first strike is just lethal uh, on Phyrexian Crusader. Not to mention, okay, so like, uh, what other matchups are there? I, I think that Control actually might have a lot of trouble versus this deck. Now, they could play at instant speed with Solitude and stuff like that, but it, not always. No, it doesn't always work. I mean, it's, they got a little bit more clunky, right? They're like a lot slower than they used to be because they're trying to play with Chalice of the Void, which this deck did give respect to. So with all the Chalice of the Voids in the metagame, you're going to get hit by the Gem Razor. You're going to get hit by the Force of Vigor. I'm sure this is exactly what this deck is trying to do. Be prepared. For everyone who had Chalice for zero for the Rhino deck, you could play it on Chalice on one versus this, but they are. They came prepared. Be prepared. But yeah, like a lot of control decks are way more clunky now. They're trying to play with more card draw spells, try to depend on Chalice of the Void, and try to back up with counter spells. But those counter spells are clunky. What? Counter spell, Archmage's Charm, even like Force and Negation. Sure, you can play for free, but what? That's only going to hit one pump spell, and that's it. And like your Path to Exiles don't exist anymore because of Prismatic Ending. So actually, there seems to be some room to beat the control decks with this archetype. So maybe it actually slipped into prominence with this really cool tech card, a Frixing Crusader.
And if you're the type of person that wants to test to see if this deck is the real deal, you can do that with Mana Traders, the premier place to rent magic cards online. It's for all your experimenting and to see what deck is best in the metagame right now. You borrow the cards, so if the deck is no good, don't worry, just send them back and borrow a new one. You can support the channel using my Mana Traders link in the description below or save 15% off your first two months using coupon code NIKACHU. So is this deck the real deal that can stand the test of time? Is this the adaptation to hit the sweet spot of the metagame? Or is this just a flash in the pan that had surprise value? Let me know in the comments section below. This has been Nikachu talking about the new Infect deck that made the top 8 of GP Las Vegas.